Seasonal Affective Disorder SAD, is different than depression. Seasonal Affective Disorder SAD, is a type of depression because many of the symptoms are like major depression, but it differs from major depression and regular depression because it only affects people during the winter months. It's thought to be due to lack of sunshine. This condition usually begins late in the fall or the start of winter. This makes sense because that's when there is less sunshine in many parts of the world. The lack of sunlight causes your body to get out of sync. The signs of SAD include Irritability Fatigue Sleeping too much Food cravings Weight gain Sometimes SAD is diagnosed when it's mild bipolar disorder. So if you have these symptoms you should seek attention from a professional trained in these things such as a psychiatrist or therapist. However, you can start with your regular doctor. Spring and Summer SAD There is also a little known condition called Reverse SAD or Summer SAD that affects people in the spring and summer. However, some believe that this might really be a type of bipolar disorder. The symptoms of Reverse SAD are Depression Insomnia Lack of appetite Weight loss Anxiety Some people can become almost manic in the summertime due to the additional light being too much for their system. These people feel more depressed in the winter than the summer, but still have issues as mentioned above in the summer. Realize that it's normal to feel down and even up sometimes. The way to know if you need help is if it's interfering with your normal life. If you can't get to work, focus at work, and function in society or get along with your family and friends, and you are feeling hopeless, then you must seek professional assistance. There is also help for winter SAD such as using a natural spectrum light and possibly short-term medications. If you have summer SAD, you want to find out what else may be going on. There are ways to get your body back in sync with circadian rhythms. Plus, it's best to be diagnosed by a professional to ensure that you don't have something more serious. How to overcome postnatal depression Postnatal depression is not as rare as some people might think. Approximately 20% of mothers experience some form of it. It happens due to the fast hormonal changes and lifestyle changes that occur after the birth of a baby. Sadly, due to the stigma associated with mental illness, a lot of women don't realize the signs and don't seek treatment. If you want to overcome postnatal depression, try these things. Talk about it. The more you talk about the problems you're facing with people you trust, the better. You can't deal with this on your own. You must tell your friends and family so they know to watch out for you and to support you. Rest, ask your friends and family to help you with the baby so that you can get plenty of rest. One thing that can bring on depression is a lack of sleep. Your body must have sleep, not only to function but also to repair itself after birth. Eat right the right food will help you keep your energy levels up. Try to eat the most healthy and nutritious food possible, which is not as hard as you think. You can pop a pre-washed sweet potato or a steamable bag of vegetables in the microwave and eat within minutes. Exercise, yes, even though you just had a baby and you aren't sleeping enough, you should take up exercise of some kind as soon as possible. If the weather is agreeable, you can put the baby in their stroller and go for a nice walk. Don't isolate yourself, it's tempting to isolate yourself after you have a baby. Everything is so messy, you have so much paraphernalia to carry, and you never know what mood the baby will be in. But the truth is, being around people will make you feel better. Go to your neighborhood park and meet new moms. Take help when offered, people are going to offer you help, and you're going to want to turn them down. 
But regardless of what you think, you're not Superwoman. Take the help. Your spouse will be happy you did and you'll be happy you did. If people want to bring casseroles for dinner, let them. You can help yourself with postnatal depression but if these things don't work, seek professional help from your doctor. When you go. Medication that can lead to depression. There are many medications that may lead to depression. It's important before you take them to talk to your doctor about your past regarding depression and to pay attention to your side effects while you're taking the meds so that you can deal with the depression if it happens. Beta blockers, these types of meds are usually given to treat high blood pressure. There are alternatives such as calcium channel blockers that are turning out to be a safer alternative without the depressive side effect. Corticosteroids, these are used to treat inflammation and are often given to people with arthritis, lupus, gout, and other autoimmune disorders. These drugs lower serotonin levels in the body which can lead to depression. You could try to go on an anti-inflammatory diet instead of taking these meds, or use over-the-counter meds like Tylenol or a prescription drug like Ultram. Benzodiazepines, these are used to treat anxiety, relax muscles, and treat insomnia. In some cases when a patient takes these for too long, they build up in the system, which causes a depressive effect. Instead of using these, try to deal with anxiety in natural ways by avoiding caffeine, going to bed at the same time each night and getting up at the same time in the morning. You can also try melatonin, which is a supplement. Hormones, each person is different and additional hormones can cause issues with the nervous system and end up causing depression even while they treat the underlying problem. Sometimes switching hormones can help and other times being prescribed an antidepressant in addition to the hormone can help. Stimulants, these are drugs like Ritalin which are often given to people with ADHD or who have conditions like narcolepsy or even sleep apnea. Since they increase dopamine levels, it is believed that over time it may cause depression. The way to deal with this is to talk to your doctor and find out if you can deal with your issues another way. Anticonvulsants, these are used to treat seizures and affect the neurotransmitters in the brain to limit seizures. While they may cause depression, you should balance the side effects with what you're treating. You may need another drug like Effexor which can provide more serotonin to combat depression. H2 blockers, these are also called proton pump inhibitors, prescribed for gastric acid and GERD. They can make people very irritable and cause depression. The best thing to do is to find out what is causing your gastric acid or GERD and treat it naturally by avoiding the food that is causing it. Statins, these are drugs people take when they have high cholesterol levels. They can cause depression due to lowering the brain levels of cholesterol too much. The best thing to do is use alternative treatments such as trying a low-fat plant-based unprocessed diet and getting your vitamin levels checked for B12, B6, and folic acid. Anticholinergics, these are for stomach cramps and GI disorders. They reduce stomach acid by blocking the effects of acetylcholine that causes our muscles to cramp. You can switch to Zantac to treat heartburn or something like Mylanta to avoid this drug. In addition, treat the problem by finding out what is wrong. You may have poor gut bacteria and need to take probiotics. As you can see, there are many medications that can cause depression. You must balance the reason for taking the medication with the side effects. But do try alternatives before using them if possible. Illnesses that can lead to depression. There are many illnesses that can lead to depression. It doesn't always happen, but it's good to be aware of what is happening to you or your loved ones. Heart attack. Many people who have heart disease end up having depression, often due to the many drugs that they must be on after. But also, many people who don't know they have heart disease end up depressed due to not feeling well. Diabetes, getting diabetes can be a huge shock for most people, which in turn can cause a lot of problems mentally. Having to take medication or shots, and not being able to eat what you want anymore, can make one very depressed. 
arthritis, depression can occur from the medications but also from having the condition. It's hard to get used to not being able to do the things you were used to doing. There may also be an association with depression and inflammatory diseases. Kidney disease, many people with kidney disease also have other issues, such as diabetes or lupus. These comorbidities can make someone feel depressed due to the changes in the brain that occur with the disease. HIV AIDS, part of the reason people with this disease end up depressed is the strong medications that you must take that cause serious problems with serotonin levels. Plus, the social stigma doesn't help. Autoimmune illnesses, MS, hypothyroidism, fibromyalgia, lupus and other autoimmune disorders can cause depression, also due to inflammation like with arthritis and the medications used to treat it. Plus, of course dealing with the new reality of having an illness like this can make it hard. Almost any problem that you have with your health can lead to depression. It's hard to deal with something, especially if it's a lifetime problem. But while some affect the brain chemistry, some are just situational based on having trouble getting used to your new life. The best thing you can do is get help from a professional dealing with your situation. How to recognize depression in others. Many people with depression try to hide it. They often don't even know what is wrong with themselves, so it's not on purpose. But there are some signs you can look for if you are worried that someone you know might be in trouble. They are tired all the time. If you have a friend or family member who plans to do things with you and then cancels a lot because they are tired, or they make other excuses, and this is going on for a long period of time, you might want to suspect depression. Irritability, someone who hasn't normally been an angry person who turns angry and irritable may be suffering from depression. Instead of cutting them off due to their behavior, offer a helping hand. Overly emotional, Many people who experience depression are being overly emotional over everything that is happening. They are easily brought to anger, sadness, crying, and overreaction to anything that is going on. They complain about sleeping issues. If you know someone who is suffering from insomnia, or who is always sleeping and avoiding everything, pay attention to how long it lasts as they may be suffering from depression. They are gaining a lot of weight fast, Many people who are dealing with depression either can't eat and lose weight, or they self-medicate with food and gain a lot of weight. If you know anyone who has gained or lost a substantial amount of weight quickly, you may want to inquire further as to what is going on if you're close enough to them. They're abusing drugs or alcohol. A lot of depressed people self-medicate so if you have any loved ones who are doing this, investigate and talk to them. Offer your support and help. They don't want sex this is something to watch in your spouse. If your spouse, who normally liked a healthy sex life suddenly doesn't want sex anymore, then there is a huge possibility that they're feeling worthless and depressed. They are in pain physically, while many times the physical pain is an actual physical illness, depression can manifest physically too. If your loved one is experiencing undiagnosed body pain, it could be depression. They may be self-harming. This could manifest in drinking, drug use, and eating too much, but it can also be things like cutting or trying to kill themselves. When you recognize these issues in people you know, don't diagnose them. Instead, offer support. Tell them how you feel about them and how important they are to you. If they do open up to you, encourage them to seek professional help. Educate yourself about depression so that you can help more. How to help a child who's dealing with depression. Dealing with depression for an adult is hard enough, but for a child, it can be very hard because it's hard to diagnose a child. It's normal for children to experience ups and downs, but if they're experiencing more downs than ups, you may want to suspect depression and get them professional help. The good thing about children is that they often do not try to hide their feelings. They may tell you they are sad. They may act cranky and they may cry a lot more than normal. If this type of behavior lasts longer than a couple of weeks, it's a good idea to get them evaluated. Other signs to look for include. They don't enjoy normal things anymore. They gain or lose weight. They sleep too much. They have insomnia. They don't want to be with people. They have no energy. They get mad easy. They feel guilty. 
They feel worthless. They demonstrate signs of low self-esteem. They can't make choices. Their grades drop. They have undiagnosable aches and pains. They think of self-harm or suicide. These are scary things that your child may be going through. The only thing you can really do is find some professional help. Get in touch with your child's school counselor so that you can get information from teachers about your child's school day. This can help you better understand your child and what they're going through. Keep the door open to your child, even when they are angry. Instead of reacting to their anger with anger, react with love. Let them know that you are there for them. If you've experienced things in your past that relate, talk to them about it. However, don't tell them to snap out of it or pull themselves up by their bootstraps. Instead, just let them know how important they are and that you want to help them. Find a professional that is used to dealing with children. The good thing about your child being underage is that you don't need their permission to take them to a psychiatrist. Find one that has a lot of experience dealing with children so that they can get to the root of the problem. There are many reasons a child might suffer from depression, from underlying issues such as bullying at school, or if they are confused about their sexuality. But as hard as dealing with a child with depression can be, it can be even harder realizing that your teenager has depression and to know what to do about it. What to do if your teen is showing signs of depression. If you have a teenager who may be depressed, first understand that sometimes teens get down when it's not depression, it's just hormones. But, if they really have depression, which means their symptoms are persistent, then you need to know how to help them. Listen to your child, when your child talks to you, listen. Ask open-ended questions, and do not respond with judgment. Even if they tell you something that totally goes against your core belief system, unless they are harming others, keep your opinion to yourself at first. You want them to feel safe when they talk to you. Talk to a counselor. You can start with your child's school counselor, but you can also call a psychiatrist or your child's regular doctor who can advise you about who to talk to. You can also read your insurance policy to find out which mental health care practitioners you can go to. They may need medication or talk therapy or both to help them. Provide security. If your child is being bullied, it's important to put a stop to this situation immediately. Do not allow just the child to deal with it. If it's happening in school, call the school right away from the first incident. Waiting can be life-threatening. If the school doesn't do anything, call the police. Spend time with your teenager. As kids grow up, you may spend less time with them because they have a life of their own with their friends. But, it's still important that you find the time, at least weekly, where you spend an hour or two alone with each of your kids. Encourage physical activity So many kids are addicted to screens nowadays, and that means they're doing less physical activity outdoors. Encourage teenagers to do something outside that doesn't involve screens for at least an hour a day. Also, encourage kids to turn off screens an hour or so before bedtime to limit their exposure at night to blue light. Suicide is a leading cause of death among adolescents. It's a serious problem that you need to be on the lookout for so that you can help. Don't wait and don't feel as if you're interfering. It's important to interfere in your teenager's life to save their life. Depression is a progressive and sometimes fatal disease. What you can do if your partner is suffering from depression. It can be very difficult dealing with a partner who is depressed. You may feel completely helpless and not sure how to act. But, there are some things you can do to help them and yourself cope. Be patient, you must tell yourself many times that you're not angry at your partner for their behavior, you're angry with depression on behalf of your partner. It's honestly not their fault, even though at times their actions make you feel it is. Instead, call on your resources to develop more patience. It's not you. It's important to realize that if your spouse is denying sex to you, it's not about you, it's about them. They are having trouble feeling worthwhile and when you feel worthless it's hard to be aroused enough for sex. It's a paradox, because likely sex would make them feel better. However, don't pressure them and understand it's not you. Seek counseling, not only should your partner be in counseling to help them deal with their depression, you should be in counseling too. 
Counseling will help you deal with their depression and how it affects you. Couples counseling, in addition, won't hurt either. Be open, if your spouse needs to moan about their day at work, allow for it. Don't offer advice or how to fix the problem. Simply listen. Then when they're done, move on to something else. Also, don't hide the condition from family members and children. Tell each person only what they need to know based on their age, but enough so that they know they're not at fault. Be open to the good times, often depression does come and go. People who are depressed will have good days. Don't hold on to those bad days. Let the day go well and hold on to those good times. Encourage physical activity when the weather is permitting, ask your partner to go on a walk with you. Act like it's just for you. The fresh air and the sunshine will be good for them, and holding hands while walking never hurt. Take up healthy cooking, even if you're not the cook in the family, a healthier diet can go far in helping deal with vitamin deficiencies which can make people feel depressed. Focus on high nutrition but make it taste good too. Use mostly plant-based organic ingredients. Dealing with a partner who has depression can be difficult. It can be almost harder dealing with aging parents. Many aging people often experience feelings of depression, sometimes situational and sometimes due to health issues or medications. It's important to know how to deal with it, especially if it's your parent. Ways to help your aging parent deal with depression. Dealing with aging parents who are also dealing with depression can be one of the hardest things you may face in their later years. The reason is that often older people do not want to seek help for their problems because they believe it shows weakness. But there are ways to help them anyway. Don't ignore their issues, if your parent isn't eating right, isn't sleeping right, or taking care of themselves, or they're acting out in emotional ways that are uncharacteristic of them, you may need to intervene to ensure that they stay healthy. That can be hard if they're not willing, but it is possible. Make time for them, if you live nearby, try to visit them weekly. If you don't, call them weekly. Make a point to take time out of your busy schedule to let them know that they're an important part of your life. Send articles through the mail that you think they'll like, as well as pictures of the grandkids or yourself. Not all aging people use the net, and even if they do they still appreciate snail mail. Let them express their feelings, getting older is hard. You lose your independence even though you don't always feel old. Your brain most of the time still feels like you're 20, but then your body lets you down. It's hard to know that you don't have long left and that the time you do have left isn't free. Listen to how they feel and don't poo-poo their thoughts and feelings. Don't talk down to them, these are your parents and even though the world has changed and they sometimes seem as if they don't know anything, they do know something. They have earned the right to be treated as adults even if they are having issues. Speak to them with their terminology so that you don't offend them or make them close up. Respect the illness depression is a real illness with causes that are physiological in nature. We may not understand all the ins and outs yet of what causes it, but it's not made up and it's not just in the mind. This is a hard thing to deal with, so it might help if you also get some professional help while you encourage your parent to get help too. It can be very hard to keep your own spirits up if you're living with a depressed person. How to keep yourself from feeling down when you're living with a depressed person. Dealing with someone else's depression can make you feel a variety of things. You may feel resentful, overwhelmed, and frustrated. It's important that you also remember to take care of yourself when you are helping someone who is living with depression. It can wear you down and cause you to feel quite low too. Learn about depression. As a real illness, there is a lot that you can study about depression. It's important to educate yourself. You can even join a group that will help you find out about mental illness, like NAMI.org. The more you learn, the better armed you'll be to help your loved one as well as yourself. Get outside help. Don't try to help your loved one alone. The worst thing you can do is help them hide their condition, because things done in private can end up going downhill real fast when it comes to depression. Depression can be a fatal illness if not treated properly. Care for your emotional health. It can be draining dealing with a depressed person, even when you love them dearly, when they are so full of negative emotions. 
you'll need to find a way to take a break from it with other people who aren't depressed. If you don't know many people, try joining a book club or volunteering. Realize you can't fix someone else. While you can be a safe place for them to fall, you can't fix them. They should be responsible for fixing themselves. You can encourage, but you can't force, so you must learn to let it go. If they won't help themselves, it's not your fault. Don't enable them. Speaking of not forcing them, don't enable them either. If someone is depressed and they refuse to get professional care, try exercise, eat right, or get any type of medical assistance, there is nothing that can be done. You can't give them ultimatums either, but let them know that you're not falling for it. It's not personal. The biggest thing to remember about depression is that it's not personal. They're not depressed because of you. They're depressed due to something else going on in their body. Of course, if you do have a bad marriage or a bad relationship that can contribute, but it's not your fault. You've heard the analogy about taking care of yourself first on an airplane, should the oxygen masks come down. Life is so much like that. It's not selfish to take care of yourself or acknowledge that you can't deal with it on your own. It's okay. If you are clear about your own feelings and needs while offering a safe place for your loved one, that's all you can do.